Hey boys and girls, it's your boy Seethercord here. Welcome to our new video for today for the Seethercord channel. Today's video, we are going to be making it for the parents of you guys. For the parents of all these cringy 13 year old fursuiters and furries out there that want to have their parents buy them a fursuit and instead of being like, hey mom, instead of getting me like an Xbox One or a PS4 or a Nintendo Switch for Christmas this year, give me a fursuit. So yes, boys and girls, if the holiday season's coming up soon, which it's not, we're eight months away from that, what's wrong with me? <laughs> Get your parents to come here right now and watch this video, sit down, get a bowl of popcorn, get yourself a nice ice cold glass of Clorox, and let's just get into this video of how you parents can get your child, son or daughter or whatever they want to be referred to as, their own unique fursuit. Let's begin, shall we? Now to actually be a little legitimate for a second here, we're going to talk about what you can do to get your child a fursuit if you want them to get one if you feel like they're of age. Now before we get into it, we gotta ask ourselves for these parents. Now parents, the one thing you gotta ask yourself before you invest money into getting your child a fursuit is how long has your kid been into the furry fandom and how much are they invested into it? Because I know you don't wanna get a lot of money to be put into getting your fursuit because you guys gotta understand that a fursuit is not like just buying a regular game console or a video game or whatever or a bike. This is an actual big investment that takes both a lot of time and a lot of money from multiple people, including yourself and including the fursuit maker or makers if there's multiple people involved. So if you feel like your child is not that much invested into it and has only been wanting it for maybe like a week or so, maybe tell them like, hey, give it some time and maybe in the future we can get you one. Or if your child seems to be into this for a very long time, is very invested in the furry community and also has been wanting a fursuit for quite a bit of time, then maybe it'd be pretty cool to invest some money into it to let your kid have one. The next thing that parents need to understand before you guys invest into getting a fursuit suit is that you need to make sure that you don't keep unfulfilled promises to your kids because these fursuits are not cheap. They are again a lot of money that will take a lot of time to produce. I would say that for the most part 90 plus percent of all fursuit makers will be charging you at least $500 for a partial suit. That's just my best estimate. Now you might get lucky and you might be able to get a partial for 300 or a full suit for maybe six or 700. And also again, mentioning that if your kid wants a full suit, know that you're gonna have to spend probably at least a thousand for most fursuit makers because full suits are definitely way more money than partial suits. So again, don't give any immediate promises to your kid about getting them a fursuit unless you are full on 100% sure. The next thing that you need to consider before you get your child a fursuit is you need to understand the level of maturity and how old your child is before you get them a fursuit. Now I'm not saying that your kid could be too old to have a fursuit, actually it's the reverse. Your kid could actually be too young to get a fursuit at this point. The reason that I say this is that if your kid is not at least 15 years old and also if they haven't fully gone through puberty and have stopped growing yet, there is a good chance that if you buy your kid who's not even fully through puberty and hasn't fully stopped growing, if you purchase them a fursuit and they get it, they could outgrow it and they can't use it anymore. So definitely wait for your kid to be at least 15 or 16 years old, probably at least mid or early high school, and then definitely also make sure that they have stopped fully going through puberty and they've stopped growing in height because you don't want to have a child that could be at least five foot eight or nearly six feet tall and then have like a fursuit that's only for like five foot five or five foot six. That could definitely be an issue. I am sorry for my viewers outside of the United States that use centimeters instead of inches. You guys can go on Google and translate that because I'm a lazy American that's entitled and I will not do that for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. I went and I checked. Just make sure they're at least 170 or so centimeters and they've fully grown into that so far. If they're below 170, give it a little time unless they're pretty sure they're just a short person. The last thing that you need to consider before you commission your child a fursuit is how responsible are they? Are they someone that do all their homework on time? Are they someone that takes care of your guys' pets? Are they, do they make sure to take out the dog or the cat on time? Hell, when they're driving, do they always make sure to keep the gas tank filled up at the best time? Do they always make sure that it doesn't get too low? Do they always make sure to clean their room? Because having a fursuit, even after you purchase it, you also have to make sure you have a lot of responsibility within yourself to take care of it all the time as well to make sure it lasts pretty long. You gotta make sure that they comb the fur. You gotta make sure that they clean the fursuit. You gotta make sure that they keep it in a sealed tight container to keep it from having bacteria build up on it over time. Because if you buy them a fursuit and they don't take good care of it, you could see it only lasting maybe one or two years, but if they take really good care of it, it can make it up to four and possibly even five years with still looking pretty good. I myself did a neutral kind of thing with taking care of it. I didn't do so well near the end of it, so it only lasted about three years before it started looking old. It looks kind of old now. Not horrible, but it is a little bit old because I took 
average care of it. So do what I did to an extent, but boost it up even more in taking care of it and you should be good to go. Think of owning a fursuit as having a pet rock because it's something I guess you kind of have to take care of, but you kind of don't if you want it to look good. This is a horrible analogy. I'm going to stop right there. So if your child has passed all the reasonable criteria when it comes to being capable of taking care of a fursuit after commissioning and putting a lot of money into it, you got to ask yourself, how do I get this fursuit? Who do I commission? What kind of fursuit do I get my child? I would say that if this is going to be your child's first fursuit, get them a partial suit, or at least maybe just start off with the head, because if you get a full body suit, you're going to have to invest even double as money or as much, or at least 1.5 times to two times as much money for the said fursuit. You also got to consider that if you get them a partial suit and it turns out they don't really use the fursuit as much or they didn't like it in the end, you wouldn't have to feel like you wasted twice as much money on a full suit. But if you got them a partial suit and it turns out they liked it a lot, then they could invest into getting a full on new full suit or they could just expand off their partial suit and turn it into a full suit. Saves money, you know? The next thing you have to be aware of when you go online to look for fursuit makers, be cautious with who you commission. Watch out for artist bewares. Make sure that you can check past commissioners who commissioned said fursuit maker to see if they did a good job with communicating, a good job with payment, and did a good job with updates and getting the fursuit shipped to them because that is a a major and important aspect when it comes to picking who I want to choose to make my fursuit for me. I would also say definitely look at which commissioners are available on Twitter. Definitely look at their past suits. If they have a full on website that looks professional and everything, it should seem that they're definitely more legit and they're not scam worthy because if they put a lot of time and effort into the website domain and also a lot of time into their social media, then why wouldn't they put a lot of time and care into their fursuits? Not all the time. Yeah, there's sometimes where they screw up. But for the most part, I would say if you take care of everything else when it comes to the business, then the fursuits should be pretty good to take care of as well. The last thing that I want to mention in this video when it comes to commissioning a fursuit is make sure that you're aware that there's not a scam going on because there are some fursuit makers that are furries. A lot of times they're not actually furries. They're just fake accounts or they're fake websites commissioning fursuits. But again, there are some times there are people within the furry community that are involved that do scam people. We recently had this happen with Liquid Sunshine Designs fursuits, aka LSD fursuits. Again, make sure that this person doesn't have artist bewares. Make sure that they've had good interactions with people within the furry community community so that way they're not toxic or anything or they're not showing to have bad business strategies and also again like maybe message them and interview them before you send them any money I would say definitely the best fursuiters to commission would be the ones that would be willing to make at least a little portion of the fursuit first so you can see how it looks and then they ask for the payment instead of having to pay first for them to get started on anything that to me is a more trustworthy and safe commissioner to get to that to me is a more trustworthy and safe fursuit maker to me at least than most others but that's just personally me this is all just my own take and advice. You don't have to follow if you don't want to, but I feel like my advice is at least decent for you guys. And that pretty much wraps up my video today on parents buying fursuits for their children. How do you guys feel about my advice? Do you guys feel like I gave good advice? Do you guys feel like I gave bad advice? Is there any advice that I missed out on that you wanted to add to this video? Let me know down in the comment section down below. If you enjoy my content and want to further help out my channel, please consider donating to me on Patreon as well as my coffee. Also, please consider smashing that like button, turn on that notification bell, and subscribe all together make sure to check out my main gaming channel known as see through cord games where me and Cramshy are playing through kirby's epic yarn together on the nintendo wii and i'm also playing through super mario 64 randomizer by myself also make sure to check out my no commentary gaming channel known as see through chills i'll be linked down in the description down below and with that all being said and out of the way thank you guys again so much for watching this video i've been see through cord and i will see you guys in the next video goodbye everyone king thwomp thrusted himself onto me he forced himself uh, upon you that's not good yes you should file charges i'm gonna have my me too moment in a second bro <laughs> that's so wrong i'm going into canada right now i'm going to canada jake you want to come with me to canada because i'm bro. in the, the i'm in the snow level i'm in uh jolly roger bay right now <laughs> the penguins are canadian confirmed <laughs> going to the swiss alps swiss alps i'm going to vancouver